Hello and welcome. So, we were discussing uh, about the application of uh, symmetry rules uh, in case of electronic spectroscopy. So, uh, similar to uh, our approach in case of vibrational uh, spectroscopy, uh, we started looking at the wave functions of the uh, uh, for the electronic transitions and uh, you know the corresponding uh, transition moment integral that we are looking at. So, the transition moment integral involving uh, all the uh, different components uh, for example, uh, vibrational and uh, you know uh, electronic as well as uh, you know spin. So, uh, rather I should say is the you know orbital and the spin. So, ultimately uh, what we got uh, by transition moment integral as the product of uh, three integrals. So, the first one we got as uh, multiplied by the and So, these were the three integrals uh, that we got ultimately for uh, an, an electronic overall electronic transition uh, and uh, we came to this by uh, using uh, you know the condition of orthogonality of uh, two uh, electronic levels. So, uh, we also mentioned that uh, this particular part this particular integral is so called Frank Condon factor. So, the Frank Condon factor gives me the overlap between the wave functions of the vibrational levels at the lowest uh, uh, electronic state and that in the upper electronic state. Okay. So, uh, what it uh, gives me? It gives me the you know overall uh, modulation in the electronic spectra. Okay. So, the second part this forms the basis for orbital selection rules. And the third one, it forms the basis for spin selection rule. Okay. So, uh, let us start with uh, the spin selection rule part. Okay. So, this is probably the uh, you know uh, the first thing that one should look at whether this uh, you know uh, this particular uh, integral is uh, vanishing or non vanishing. So, uh, you know before going even uh, into the you know, detailed discussion about this th individual three integrals. So, since this is my overall transition moment integral the you know allowedness of an electronic transition uh, will be uh, you know affirmative if the overall integral is uh, non vanishing. Otherwise, if any one of this uh, uh, integral is uh, 0, then uh, the corresponding uh, transition will be forbidden. Now, when we talk about this particular part, so what we look at? So, uh, this is a transition uh, between uh, 
two states having uh, two spin states. Right? So uh, if suppose I have a ground state, suppose uh, this, and if I want to make a transition to say uh, or maybe say one to to say so in this kind of transition uh, if i have to look about uh, uh, you know look for the allowedness of uh, this particular uh, transition that is uh, whether it is spin allowed or not then only thing i have to look for the you know spin multiplicities of this two states okay, between which the transition is taking place or i'm um, you know one is uh, thinking about having a transition between these two states so if this two states have different spin multiplicities they are going to be orthogonal right because this uh, wave function spin wave functions uh, you know, uh, uh, having uh, two different multiplicities, they are completely orthogonal. So, therefore, until and unless the spin multiplicities of the two states involved here, uh, the transition is forbidden. So, therefore, a case where, like, you know, spin multiplicity 1 to 1 is allowed. Okay. So, that means if I have, uh, say, singlet state, I can have a transition to a singlet state having spin equals to 0. So, spin multiplicity is 1. Similarly, I can have uh, say triplet to triplet is allowed, but a singlet to triplet is forbidden or a singlet to a quartet is forbidden while quartet to quartet or singlet to singlet is allowed. So, just one has to look at the spin multi multiplicity and uh, you know one can easily figure out whether the transition is spin allowed or not. So, next have a look at the orbital uh, selection rule right. So, that is our this particular integral. So, if I just take out this integral, what I have? I have two electronic states and the transition involving uh, in between those two states. Now, uh, just like what we got in case of uh, you know vibrational transitions, here also it has to be uh, handled in the very same way. So, uh, uh, you know, in this particular case, one has to look at the symmetries of each of these functions. So, the situation is very similar to a uh, condition when I have three different function and I am look, you know, uh, trying to find out the value of the integral. So, here I know that this particular, you know, uh, you know, these two wave functions and the operator, all of them individually transform according to the, you know, uh, one of the IRs of the point group for the molecule. So, therefore, the, you know, allowedness of this particular transition will depend on their, on the direct products of those irreducible representation to which this belongs. Therefore, my situation is now is such that that if I have gamma of psi e prime, gamma of mu e, and gamma of psi e, this direct product. So, where this individual gammas are the irreducible representation to according to which these individual functions transform as. So, this 
this is a triple type direct product, right? We have three different irreducible presentation and having a direct product of uh, between them, among them. So, this triple direct product, if it gives the totally symmetric irreducible representation as a result or it contains the totally symmetric IR as one of the component, then this transition will be allowed. Right? So, <coughs> as usual this is a dipole moment operator. So, it depends on x, y and z Cartesian coordinate systems. Now, uh, for an electronic transition where the ground state is totally symmetric. Suppose, I have a I have an electronic state which is totally symmetric when it is in the ground state. Then simply my uh, solution uh, becomes such that I will look for uh, whether this excited uh, the IR corresponding to the excited electronic state contains at least one of the Cartesian coordinates x, y or z as its basis. Then only I will have the total integral as non-zero. Right? So, therefore, an electronic transition for a totally uh, symmetric uh, uh, ground state will be allowed only when the excited state has either x or y or z or uh, you know uh, maybe you know x y or x y z all uh, as its basis. All right. So, uh, or otherwise, in general, this is the thing one has to look at. Look at the triple direct product of these functions, and you see whether the transition is allowed or not. So, for example, uh, we will take the case of uh, of benzene molecule. So, uh, if if I take for benzene uh, two states uh, like one a one g. And then I have a transition to 1 B to u. All right. So, uh, if I try to make a transition like this, then first place the spin multiple is fine. So, it is spin allowed, no problem about that. But whether it is orbitally allowed or not, that one has to figure out. So, what I have to do? I have to see, see A1 G it corresponds to totally symmetric irreducible representation correct uh, for the d6h point group therefore i have to see whether this one contains uh, you know either x or y or z as its uh, basis function or not so therefore i will again look at my character table so character table for d6h point group if i look at then I see that this B to U uh, B to U does not transform either of, uh, you know according to X or Y or Z. Okay. So, I can immediately say that this transition is orbital forbidden. Right? So, if I want to look at this problem even more explicitly, then what I have to do? I have to uh, take a direct product of a 1 g and uh, the you know irreducible representation according to which this uh, dipole moment operator transform as that is I have to look for the irreducible representation for which x, y and z form the basis for. So, if I look at that, then uh, I see that uh, z forms the basis for uh, a 2 u. So, and uh, uh, x and y form the basis of E 1 u. So, 
so then I have to explicitly uh, do the direct product. So uh, I wrote it in a particular way that you will be you know seeing in most of the books uh, related to this electronic spectroscopy. So here uh, A to U <coughs> forms the basis for B uh, for the uh, uh, for Z axis while uh, you know X and Y transform as E1 U. Now for the operator I use the small letter okay. So that you know in many cases is used. So this uh, you know two terms within the parenthesis means that actually we are doing two separate direct products. So first with A1G A2U B2U one direct product and also A1G A1 E1U and B2U so two different direct products. So after doing that what I get I get uh, <coughs> I get B1 G and E2 G okay. So this is for the first one, this is for the second one. So these two are not the totally symmetric IR right. So clearly this transition is orbitally you know forbidden. So that one we have already seen. So in either way you can go if you are not comfortable in you know uh, doing in this short way you can do it explicitly in this format and get the result. If the result does not contain in a totally symmetric uh, irreducible representation, the transition is orbitally disallowed. All right. So uh, we will look at uh, uh, this, uh, you know, uh, overall, uh, uh, trans, you know, electronic transitions uh, in one particular molecule in greater detail that we uh, we said, uh, uh, you know, maybe a week ago when we were dealing with uh, the symmetry adapted linear combination of uh, naphthalene, uh, naphthalene molecule uh, there we form the states by solving the uh, you know uh, secular equations and secular determinant and uh, using Huckel's approximation and then ultimately using the Huns rule and Pauli's exclusion principle we filled up the uh, you know orbitals orbitals were formed by the linear combination of uh, uh, p pi orbital uh, of the carbon atoms. So <coughs> that we will come shortly. So at this point uh, uh, I would like to uh, mention one particular thing uh, that uh, you know Many of you in your uh, you know inorganic uh, uh, books you have uh, or you know courses you have heard about the forbiddenness of uh, certain transition, particularly in case of say uh, metal complexes, right? And uh, you know you have heard about Laporte selection rule. So what is this Laporte selection rule uh, in this context? I will mention that. So. So Laporte selection rule is particularly important in case of uh, centrosymmetric molecule. So in case of metal complexes what you have uh, you know uh, this uh, you know ligands form uh, uh, you know that's mainly the sigma bonds and uh, the metal orbitals they form the non-bonding electrons uh, non-bonding orbitals. So uh, metal uh, you know the d electrons you have uh, you know states having T to G and E G symmetry. So in a transition from a T to G to E G okay, which is nothing but a transition between two types of D orbitals. So these type of transitions are known as D D transition and for central symmetric molecule such D D transition is forbidden. So this is what Laporte selection rule tells me. Now why is it so? If you look at the transition moment integral here, so <coughs> what you will find that <coughs> this d orbitals uh, in case of 
centrosymmetric molecule they are of g type correct so uh, because uh, if you do an inversion operation so nothing happens to this d orbitals if you look at the component functions like you know either it will be xy or xz or you know x square minus y square or z square like so all these functions are invariant to inversion so therefore you have uh, a dipolar transition where operator is of u type while the you know uh, you know uh, you know transitions are taking place between two g type orbitals so therefore the overall transition moment integral becomes u type and therefore the value is zero so this type of transition in metal complexes for centrosymmetric uh, metal complex is disallowed or forbidden and this is what we have as laporte selection rule all right now let's uh, move our att attention to the other part that is particularly this part related to the frank and uh, you know factor now uh, we have looked at the vibrational transitions and uh, the corresponding selection rule how to uh, get those things now here when we are uh, when we were discussing about uh, the allowedness of a, you know a, a, a transition involving two or electronic orbitals there we assumed that uh, that you know transition was taking place from uh, v equals to 0 of the lower electronic state to the v equals to 0 of the upper electronic state right so the situation was something like uh, so this is v prime equals to 0 and here it was v equals to 0. So, we had a transition like this. So, that you know both of them both of the vibrational uh, states are at their ground states and therefore belong to the totally symmetric IR and uh, I did not have to think about the symmetries of this two because automatically it is taken care of. Now, what will happen if there are vibrational states involved which are uh, not uh, totally symmetric, right? So, what will happen if I, you know, excite from V is equal to 0 to V is equal to V prime equals to 1 here, okay? So, I should think about a transition which will have both vibrational transition as well as electronic transition. So, altogether this is known as vibronic transition. Now, though uh, here you can say uh, of, of course my vibrational uh, you know it, it is situated on one vibrational state to another you know I am having another vibrational state, but since uh, both of them are uh, the ground state ground vibrational state. So, we call this is as, as if it is a pure electronic transition there is no uh, contribution coming from the vibrational states. Now, if I think about a situation where I have uh, and then this, though you remember that we have earlier decoupled this, all right, and you have d term. So, this is my transition moment integral for a vibronic transition, right. So, here uh, you can see that uh, depending I have to consider the symmetries for both electronic state as well as the vibrational state. So, if I have a situation where the symmetry of this vibrational state is you know uh, different from this one, then the whole scenario changes, right. So, one particular example I will uh, give you say for example, we were talking about this uh, you know DD transition in case of centrosymmetric molecule. Now, if I uh, if I have uh, instead of say you know at, at ground level the, all the vibrational states are Gerade type if you look at the uh, uh, corresponding uh, corresponding uh, wave function for vibrational state. Okay. So, if I find an Ungerade state here, 
at that point what happens your overall center symmetry of the problem is broken now the transition the pure vibrational transition which were i mean uh, the uh, pure electronic transition which was not allowed here because of this you know vibronic coupling i can have a transition which was earlier forbidden now can be partially allowed okay so uh, rest of the things are exactly similar to what we did in this particular case of electronic just orbital transitions right so all i have to do i have to now worry about the irreducible representation uh, according to which each of them each of these functions transform as and have the direct product and try to find out whether or not the totally symmetric irreducible representation uh, is contained in the result or not so uh, we will stop here today and in the following class we'll come back with a, a particular example of uh, that naphthalene molecule uh, for which we formulated the you know states their energies and uh, we will try to see how first place uh, we have to uh, you know find the symmetries of the states uh, find the symmetry of the orbitals the states and then we can we comment on the allowedness of certain transitions or not thank you very much